What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. With this video, we are jumping into Task Force Z, issue number 7. If you have not been keeping up with this series, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. Be sure to check out Robin issue number 13 video. This will have the names for our comic giveaway. You can also find out if you are a winner in the community tab where I will also post the names. But for Task Force Z, they have had nothing but obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. The Lazarus Resin, it seems to be drying up wherever it came from. They no longer have the ability to just resurrect anybody they want. Having a very limited amount, they have to try to find a way to get more of this Lazarus Resin. And that means recruiting a brand new Task Force Z. Be sure to buy the comic, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number 7, we are picking up directly in the fray. Red Hood and his crowbars, he is cracking some freaking skulls taken on every single one of the villains that he could ever remember. And this includes the Joker. Not only does he cross crowbars with the Joker, he also sees Oracle and Nightwing. We see him in his original Robin suit. Him trying to plead and say that he wants to save lives and that is all he has ever been trying to do. But nothing but the dead surround him. Even Nightwing and Oracle are zombies. And then we have Red Hood waking up from all of this craziness. Because this was nothing more than a nightmare. Waking up in the chop shop. This is their headquarters. When he wakes up, this is where he is met by the Dr. Crows. The two individuals that have been working on the scientific aspect of everything going on. The dream that he just experienced. It is an effect of the Lazarus Resin. Now the Dr. Crows, they have been working to eliminate all of the side effects. This is one that they haven't been able to take care of just yet. Red Hood is more concerned on why they are in his freaking bedroom. And they have come to let him know that the team is ready. The team made up of Mr. Freeze, KG Beast, and Bane. And while they are all technically alive, we see the hand of Bane, it falls completely off of his body. The problem is, they don't have enough Lazarus resin. They have enough to keep everybody alive for probably the next week. And that's saying that they don't get injured or killed in that time frame. And while they were able to synthesize a little bit of it, they did this from the body of the fishermen, which means they are working on very, very limited time. Whatever they are going to do, they need to do it quickly. The idea is that maybe they make a move on Mr. Bloom because he was the one that tricked everybody. If he is really working for Powers International, that is the location that they have to rob to take the Lazarus Resin and keep their operation moving. Red Hood knowing that they are going to need some new team members. He sends his team out to recruit some new people. The first one is Copperhead. Sending KG Beast after Copperhead to try and recruit him onto their team. Copperhead Red believes that KG Beast is here on the orders of Amanda Waller. At this point, Amanda Waller has disappeared to Earth 3. With her disappearance, there is a huge power void. But they were given orders that if you cannot convince them or capture them, then you need to kill them and bring them back here. Picking us up with Solomon Grundy. Grundy is sitting here all by himself, and that's when he sees Bane. Bane lets him know that you need to come with me. Grundy unwilling to be a prisoner to anybody ever again. We see the two behemoths go at one another, each of them getting their good blows in. But Bane is letting him know that he is not here to fight him. He is here to make him an offer. 
submitting in this fight and letting Grundy know, do what you have to do. But Bane knows the path that he is walking is a very lonely one. What Bane is offering is camaraderie, teamwork, and friendship. For Solomon Grundy, this is kind of what he always wanted. It is what he has always wanted is just a friend. Someone not to see him as a horrible monster, but someone that cares about him. Taking us to Powers International. This is where we have Mr. Bloom operating on some kind of man-bat baby. This appearing to be his test subject. Doing all kinds of crazy experimentation. The truth is, Powers International, they brought Dr. Bloom or Mr. Bloom on for the simple fact that he knows the Lazarus resin. That he is the one individual that can help them more than anybody else. Even with that being said, they are keeping him on a very tight leash. We can only assume that Mr. Bloom, who has been 50 steps ahead this entire time, has some tricks up his sleeve. This is what takes us to Red Hood. He is going to get their last recruit. Getting rid of all of his equipment, Red Hood is making this a fair fight. The individual he is looking for is Victor Saz. With Zaz not wasting any time and immediately going in on Red Hood trying to take him out, Red Hood is able to get the upper hand. Using gravity and momentum against Zaz, we see in this little junkyard, the vehicle that Zaz is on, it gets flipped over, landing on his legs. Red Hood is here to recruit him onto Task Force Z. The only thing about that, you have to be dead to join Task Force Z. And it does doesn't specify if Red Hood actually kills him right here because while it looks like Jason is trying to pull his legs out from under the vehicle, simultaneously his boot is on his neck. And we'll talk about that more at the end of the issue. But picking us up with the Dr. Crow's clones and Mr. Freeze. They have what's left of their Lazarus resin sitting right here in front of them. As Mr. Freeze begins asking questions, this is where one of the Dr. Crow's accidentally lets it slip that there is enough Lazarus resin to bring one person back permanently. Taking us to Two-Face at Powers International. He has showed up here so he can have a conversation with Miss Powers herself. Trying to cut a deal. Trying to bring the war to an end before it even begins. Asking her simply if you would turn over Dr. Bloom. Give us the Lazarus resin and give up everything that you are doing. We can call this quits. Of course, Miss Powers unwilling to do so and even saying that she could probably have him arrested. And of course, Two-Face having a trick up his sleeve. He has his entire team down in the basement, sitting in a van, waiting to be let loose saying that the authorities would quickly figure out the same venom, the same Lazarus resin that is in their veins you guys are creating here at Powers International. And so even if Miss Powers wanted to take Two-Face out right here, right now, she is not willing to have her entire operation uncovered. And so Harvey Dent gives her 24 hours to make a decision. And if she decides that she doesn't want to give all of of this up then they will go to war as Harvey Dent gets back to the home base back to the chop shop he is met by Red Hood Solomon Grundy and the Dr. Crows going exactly how he expected it to go he tells all of them that they need to prepare for war the only issue is there is a problem the first problem is that KG Beast and Bane they had died in their fights and their new recruits, they are also all dead. Which means they need enough Lazarus resin for at least 5 resurrections. The second problem is that Mr. Freeze took every bit of their Lazarus resin they had left. Which means that there is no way to resurrect anybody else. Their entire team is cold, dead, and lying on slabs. As Two-Face begins to freak out because he just threatened to go to war with Powers International. Threaten them with his army. 
an army that now lays dead right here in front of him. Now the question is, does anybody know where to get more of that Lazarus resin? Does anybody have a little secret stash put away? Because if you do, now is the time that we get it back. Luckily for every single one of them, Red Hood had given a vial to Batman, being the last viable source that they can get their hands on. The only problem is Jason Todd knows for a fact that Batman isn't going to want to give this up. And so they are going to have to rob the Batman. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Alright, so for the last six issues, I have thoroughly been enjoying this line. Yeah, they took the, the guns away from Red Hood and gave him crowbars. But in this line, they are also making him a murderer. And I'm not okay with this. This is not Red Hood. This is not Jason Todd. Red Hood is literally out here murdering other individuals under the clause that it's okay. We can bring them back to life. But what they are learning right here, right now, is that that's not necessarily the case. Their entire team is lying dead right there in front of them. They have no resin, which means Red Hood just freaking killed a guy, and he is not coming back to life, at least for the time being. But this also raises some moral and very ethical questions. Can our superheroes kill people if there is the stipulation that you can bring them back to life? The truth is, Batman would probably beat the bricks off of Jason Todd for doing what he has been doing. Yeah, he's been working undercover. Yeah, he's been trying to figure out this whole organization to figure out where all the Lazarus resin has been coming from. But can we justify having Jason Todd murder people? You know, this is the whole reason that they took away his guns in the first place. And now we're saying that he kills people with his bare hands. I feel like it is very much extreme that Jason Todd should have never got his hands dirty. That even if you can bring back people permanently using enough of the Lazarus resin, it's weird how they, they really ignored the idea that Lazarus resin really messes with the person and they come back differently. With this Lazarus resin, what they are saying is that you can just come back to life that we have found the way to immortality, there's got to be consequences. There's got to be some kind of, of handoff at this point. Because all you're doing is creating a suicide squad that is immortal. And if people like Two-Face and Powers International can get their hands on it, who's to say that not everybody can do it? At some point, you have to put a stop to all of this. Will that person be Red Hood that brings this down? And will he be held responsible by Batman and all of his peers once he returns from this undercover operation. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now, if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, like this video, and until the next breakdown.